and the Nigeria Nuclear Regulatory Bill because of their potential importance. Now a new uh, nominee is coming in now uh, for screening. The nominee is Mustafa Baba Shouri from Borno State. Baba Shouri was born on the 4th of July 1966. He attended Gamburu one primary school made degree between 1972 and 1978 where he obtained his primary school certificate between 1978 and 1983 he attended government secondary school damagum and attended the university of made degree between 2000 and 2002 <laughs> He has a PSC in Sociology and Anthropology. The nominee from Borno State. Honor Mustafa Shohuri was the Minister of State works and housing. On behalf of my colleagues, let me welcome you to the Senate. And we already have your CV, but if there is anything you want to highlight or emphasize, you are at liberty to do so. And if there is anything that is omitted, but you think will be important for the Senate in this exercise. Please feel free to tell the Senate. So once again, you are welcome, and you can address the Senate. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency, the Senate. Uh, President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Deputy Senate President, Principal Officers of the Senate, Distinguished Senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Good morning, sir. Mr. President, Distinguished Senators of our great country, it affords me a great pleasure to present myself before you for confirmation as Minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, bringing with me my, world, my wealth of grassroots political experience, which, as you will all agree, with me is a fundamental requirement for this most important assignment for which Mr. President has nominated me. Having said that, may I also intimate that I am delighted to have this rare privilege and distinct honor to give a small talk profiling of my background. The Zungu Senators of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I am Honorable Mustafa Babashauri from Maiduguri, Borno State. I am here as a ministerial nominee of the Federal Republic of Nigeria seeking your confirmation to serve our fatherland and people of great nation of Nigeria. Mr. President, sir, distinguished senators, as I have stated in my introductory remarks, I'm a grassroots man. My desire to serve the ordinary people dealt me into poli partisan politics sometimes order, back order, in 1995. Order, order when the then military government under leadership of General Sani Abacha partially lifted the ban on political activities. I started my political career 
as a delegate on non-party basis. I contested and won the seat of a councillor in La Mislaja Bomari on zero party basis. I contested and won the chief seat for the chairman of the Metropolitan Council. I was twice elected as a member of House of Assembly, a Bono State House of Assembly. I was also elected as member of the House of Representatives on 2007 to 2011. Mr. Order, order, order. Mr. President, sir, distinguished senators, having made my modest and humble contribution to the development of my state, I aspire and got elected again in 2007 as member House of Representatives of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, representing my degree federal constituency, an election that enabled me to serve my country at the national level, there at the House of Representatives. In addition to the basic responsibility of making laws, I have equally participated in other functions and responsibilities assigned to me. These, my distinguished senators, gave me an opportunity to serve not only my immediate constituency, but the country as a whole. I was also appointed member, I was also appointed Honorable Minister of State, Power, Works and Housing between 2015 to 2019. Your Excellency, distinguished senators, throughout my political life, I have to the base of my ability serve and represent the ordinary Nigerians in the course of discharging my duties in the various offices I found myself particularly in the National Assembly and later as a Minister of State, Power, Works and Housing, I have traveled around the country to inspect and supervise projects, including the construction of roads, housing, bridges, and power projects all over, all across the length and breadth of this country. Equipped with the wealth of experience gathered at the various level of our democratic setting at local, state, and federal level, spanning over two decades of experience, I believe I'm well equipped to render my invaluable contribution in the wondrous tax of nation building if given the opportunity to serve. I make this assertion, believing faithfully and counting confidently on this hallowed chamber that you will find me, my nomination, quite worthy of your kind approval to serve our fatherland. Finally, I wish to end this short presentation by Emerson thanking you. I'm also deeply grateful to all of you for the great honor of hearing me speak, and I'm pleased for your time and attention. Thank you once again, sir. Uh, very distinguished colleagues, the nominee served as a member of the House of Representatives between 2007 and 2011, as we can see in a CV. And of course, it is our tradition here that those nominees who are once members of the National Assembly enjoy a certain privilege and concession. And that is, this is a place they served their fatherland from. So we normally extend the privilege, but we also request our leaders to speak on our behalf. And I will start with minority leader. Speak on behalf of this. Minority leader, speak on behalf of the Senate. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting as the chair. Baba Shehuri, I have interacted with him. 
as Minister of State in the Power, Works and Housing Ministry. And let me tell my colleagues that during that period, we heard of fights in the transport ministry between ministers and ministers of state. We heard of fights in the agriculture ministry between ministers and ministers of state. We never heard. We also heard in the petroleum industry, but we never heard in the minister of... Uh, I'm going somewhere. I, I'm going somewhere, sir. Very, very, very soon. Distinguished colleagues, there was never a fight in the Ministry of Petroleum Resources because the President was the Minister of Petroleum Resources and he never fought with the Minister of State. So you are wrong on that count. <laughs> and so I take your intervention under advisement and is very well guided. But what I want to say and what I want to point out is that this may be a good opportunity for us to let the executive arm know that ministers of state must be given very clear uh, schedules of duty. Should be given so that we will not have any such because if he had used his bulk and weight, <laughs> it would have been a different thing. <laughs> and so he exhibited a lot of decorum which he got from the House of Prayer in the National Assembly. And he took everything in good faith. And so, the Senate would wish to ask him that this time let them not make you Minister of State so that you will, um, you will now be a senior minister. You must graduate. But even then, we want to reiterate that it is necessary for the executive to know that it is very, very good for each person to know exactly where he's, um, so that people don't get it from. Uh, and so we thank you, and we say, we wish you well when you go to the executive again. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. President or Chairman, I want to come under personal explanation. 43. Do I read or I go ahead? By the intentions of the Senate and the leave of the President of the Senate, a Senator may make a personal explanation although there be no question before the Senate. But no controversial matter may be brought forward, nor any debate arise upon the explanation. The terms of the proposed statement shall be submitted in detail to the President of the Senate. And when the I have not made the team, but I think my foot really arose out of the last submission. And I felt I'm duty bound to make a personal expression if I'm privileged by the chairman to do so by this order. Even though you didn't submit to me the terms, and I, I want to imagine that it's not a controversial thing, I will allow you to. You can go ahead. He has been bending the rules. So oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's very serious. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I just want to see this opportunity to inform the minority leader that there has always been clear-cut schedule of duties for ministers of state. Yeah. I was once a minister of state of power like him, and I think, and I've been interacting with various ministers of state up to this date. So this government, President Buhari's government, has clear-cut duties for ministers and ministers of state. Yes. So it's not that you tell us what to do. Yes. Thank you. Well, 
distinguished uh, Senator Andrew Mogoja, your point of order is well sustained. <laughs> Senate leader. Mr. President, sitting in the chair, my distinguished colleagues, I, I would like to start first by affirming the point of order that has been raised by uh, Senator Goji, who has of course been a minister and uh, a long time serving senator. I want to further affirm that I was, when I was in the civil service, during the time of Obasanjo, Hakim Bab Ahmed and I and several other permanent secretaries of the civil service were responsible for actually defining in each ministry the roles of the minister and the roles of the minister of state with specific schedules of duty. The kind of conflicts that emerged were not because of schedules of duty were not divided. It was more of a personal conflict between individuals which was an ego kind of issues that arose in terms of some uh, relationships that have not really been well sorted out and defined. So the issue of whether there was conflict in schedule really does not arise. But I would like to go back to the issue of Baba Shehuri. Going through the CVs, Mr. President, and sitting at the chair, you could see a person who was a very rich, political pedigree. It's a person with a lot of grassroots political experience. Right from the municipal level and up to the national level. He had gone as a member of the House of Representatives 2007 to 2011. And by the array of the people who have accompanied him, who are also accomplished politicians. I could see Kumalia there. He's a person who has discharged and paid his dues as a political operator and as a political fighter. Mr. President, this was a person who came before the S Senate. And the S Senate, in its wisdom, considered him as a person who is worthy of appointment as a minister of the Federal Republic. In addition to that, I have interacted with the Borno State Caucus of this Senate. And all the members of that caucus, without exception, have affirmed that the candidate is suitable to represent the state in the Federal Executive Council. With this in mind, Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, I would ask this Senate to ask Mr. Baba Shehuri to bow and leave the chamber. I so recommend. Distinguished colleagues, is it the view of this Senate that this nominee, a former colleague, a grassroots politician from Borno State, takes a bow and go? Yes. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. Now we can take a bow.
Mustafa Baba Shehuri from Borno State, a former member of the 